It's Friday! It's 7 p.m. This is Easy 8 Online Painting Club. My name's Danny. It says it right down there in the bottom. Uh, week 19. Wow. Like, just a couple more weeks and we've been going for six months. It's been a really good week for me. I hope you guys uh, have had a cracking week. Uh, I've got things done. I have finished painting things and i'm going to show you guys all about that in just a moment if you are new here to easy eight online painting club welcome thanks for coming along and stopping by um this isn't a tutorial channel this is a live painting club so you guys can just come along uh bring any of the stuff that you need to get painted and just enjoy the company maybe get some motivation from us maybe even some inspiration and that'd be really really cool we've of course got our regular viewers coming in there luke and adrian evening and just in time for the start brilliant nice to see you guys thanks for coming along again you guys are so regular it's brilliant and jeff lacy oi oi kyle of course is in the comments he's also here waiting to come on with us because what would the show be without kyle um so yeah it's been a really good week for me um because i like i say i've I've got some units finished. Those zone tropes, man, have been taking me so, so long to get done. But I finally have finished them. But for one little detail, and I'll save that for in just a moment. Um, if you are new, or even if you just haven't done it already, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Every little bit helps, even if you're not a regular viewer or you watch it back later on on replay, that's absolutely fine. And of course, just at the bottom of the screen there, uh, I actually held them. Ah, oh, look at that. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, you can see our other platforms as well. So we're not just here on YouTube. We have Facebook and we have Instagram as well. Get yourself over there and uh, like us, uh, subscribe to us, follow everything that we do. And that would be really helpful. Thanks very much. Of course, I am not here by myself. I am here with Kyle today. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, everyone. Hey, long day, Kyle, you've been telling me. Yeah, long, long, tough day after a long, tough week. This was my little light at the end of the tunnel to get through so uh, me and Danny were just talking before the show and my first half of the show is going to start by just being there in the comments having a chat with people and then I'm going to break the paints out nice. for my second half to get on with my deaf company so join me in the comments say hello how's your week been have you been hobbying have you got anything done if not just how's your week been is there anything interesting you? Any news coming out? I know obviously Warhammer Community rolls out lots of news. Any of that excite, excite you? I've seen some drops of a new Necromunda shooting game that looks awesome. Computer game, anything like that? Anything visual like that. I chat. love it because you can yeah. just get so much inspiration from it as well. And these games that are coming out, yeah. gameplay aside, like the, the, the content looks really cool. Yeah. We got a new member in the comments, Simon Jury. Hello. Thanks, Simon, for coming along. Brilliant. Nice to see you there. Um, yeah, Kyle, um, last week was not a disaster, but it was a little bit, it was a bit rocky on the road, wasn't it? <laughs> the video. It was tough. Uh, yeah, we had some two tough things. video issues. Two things yes. made that happen, I think. At least two things. So, for the last couple of weeks, maybe about a month, Windows has been trying to do an update on my computer that I run this broadcast on. I've paused it because every time I install that update, it stops the stream software from working. Like, so I have to go back every single time. So I stopped it from doing it. Like, you can't install on my computer. But what it was doing was it was downloading <laughs> all those files in the background like a sneaky. Um, so they're there. They've been done. And now I've paused everything so we can't do anything. Uh, and I've also updated um, to the recent um, version, which seems to be working now. Great. Also, uh, we in this house uh, checked our internet line um, and got our provider to uh, have an inspection on it. And there is a problem, like a physical problem with it somewhere. So very, very soon, hopefully an engineer will be coming around to have a look at that line. Um, but, you know, a little bit of time on that because of COVID and the pandemic and, you know, safety measures that they have to take for that. Um, so apologies to anyone who was watching. Yeah, we watched it back uh, and it was a bit dreadful. I'm really sorry. I, I cannot tell <laughs> when it's I, I can see a video. I can see me here and I can see Kyle on the screen there but I can't tell if it all starts to slow down I just get little frame rate warnings um, and, that, and that's about it really and then of course it cuts off at the end again so my apologies we weren't talking about anything super wonderful um, but it's just always nice to say goodbye and thanks for coming along so if you did watch this last week um, and I know that we had a lot of new viewers watching it back on replay um thanks for yeah you know, thanks for watching thanks for coming along like kyle was saying we get a lot out of this um to help provide you with motivation just the company to get your stuff painted really um so yeah those are the problems we had last week we hopefully won't have them this week if we do 
<laughs> it's not yeah, a recorded we'll show, man. It's not. It's yeah. just not recorded. <laughs> um, so yeah, Kyle, you, you said that you're not going to be painting in the first half. Just have a bit of a no. rest, yeah. Yeah, bit of a rest, bit of a recharge. Okay. Um, for those regular viewers know, I'm, I tend to be online all day on the Friday, and it was a particularly tough, tough and draining day. So I sure. thought I just want to come on and, and be around the community and, and have a chat with some people, and then I want to break out my death company for a bit of um, dry brushing and just see how they come out. See if that's Sweet. the way I want to go with it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Simon's playing the comments. Painting? Oh, he got it. He what got it before painting? before Adrian took your lines away from you again. Yeah. <laughs> not that again. Not yeah, that what are you painting that. this evening? We want to know. If you if you are painting, could be a canvas. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you if you've got models and they're not war game models, or you have got war game models, tell us what game does it belong to, what brand, and how are you painting up. We want to know everything. And you can also drop photographs on our Facebook. Cool. Simon says thanks for the welcome. All going well at the mo. Brilliant. Nice to hear it. Cool. So, I've got. I'm going to take you over to the workbench, Kyle because and I, I know that you got a delay so i will be patient i'm gonna take you over here because not, here it is it's the zone slopes but i want to show you that they're done <laughs> Yay! i want to show you that they're done now i was taking some photographs putting them up on facebook and various other platforms instagram so on and so forth and as i was taking photographs when i finished doing them i realized that there is just on this part of the head here i don't know if can i get my lighting close enough so just here, <laughs> where I did a, a little crimson wash on this, whatever this funny little frill grill thing is on this head, um, there's a bit of white paint exposed underneath where the paint shrank. Um, and it stands out like a sore thumb. And I was going to repair it the other day, but last week I said that I really wanted to finish them on the show because I never get anything finished on the show. And this show is all about finishing stuff. So they're not done yet, Kyle. Yeah. I've got here some crimson, <laughs> and I'm going to finish this bad boy live on the show. Nice. <laughs> Thanks very much. So, a bit of crimson going in. It's such a small detail, I'd be surprised if you can even see it, and I haven't got my um, my camera zoomed in because I'm doing bigger stuff today. But here we go. Put a little bit in there. Uh, they're, they're all varnished and everything as well. And I noticed it when I was taking photographs. I was like, oh, that, that will not oh, do. No. Yeah. Kyle? I would like to proudly announce that I have finished another unit live oh. on this show. Oh. Uh, that'll be a round of applause from the crowd. Thank you very much. <laughs> you need yeah. a banner. You yeah. Need a banner to go across <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I've only thought of that. Uh, anyway, what what took me so long last week doing them was um, on this particular model here, the um, the acid pool base thing that I did at the bottom. For some reason. The paint just wasn't playing ball. Perhaps I was trying to rush it. I don't know. Uh, it just wasn't having the right effect. I took a photograph and put it on Facebook because it's nice to show you sometimes that things just go wrong. The show went a little bit wrong. My painting went a little bit wrong. But I was able to fix it shortly before I threw it out the window. <laughs> and uh, it came out really well. And I'm really chuffed with them. I do have yet to make a really good... Um, sort of color scheme for the the soil the ground on them if you like i've got the gray here on the cracked earth but this other bit is just this kind of brown I've, I've left it because i don't really know what to do with it yet um, but i've come up with some good ideas i've been searching around for different techniques and once again found some new products army painter do some nice nice um like tones like filters and they do one um, which is like a cold blue color um and it will really it should hopefully i'll give it a test um should complement and uh, the gray colors that i've got quite well if i paint it gray so it will look kind of cool uh and be a nice gray departure from the grays that are already on my um on, on the bugs themselves so yeah we'll see what happens um but, you know, I'll, I'll do a live little demonstration on that as when I get it. Uh, more comments going in. Um, so so uh, Luke is painting some Blood Angels as well. He's seen the light of uh, that is Blood Angels as being the, the, the right way forward. Um, no, it's the diorama, if I remember rightly. So he'll be painting some sort of Tyranid getting smushed by a chaplain. Um, it's, it's not the right. Chaplain <laughs> model. It's quite an interesting model. And I think you, Luke was saying, yeah, he's on like the wire wired in armor feature so it should, yeah it should dry brush up really nicely nice um, doing that adrian's giving you a round of applause thanks very much cheers. cheers if i do say so myself finally got one done <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And Jeff is really showing off his multitasking by sculpting medieval tents, drinking vodka, and eating curry. All the what? Time. What a brilliant! What a brilliant way to spend your Friday evening. Uh, this yeah, is a kid-friendly you... show, but if you are going to drink alcohol, it's not a problem, man, because no one can yeah. see you. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I, no, I so... forgot my banana beer again. Oh, oh man. Beer. Crazy. Well, I've just eaten. I've just scoffed. It was a bit late on the eating, so hopefully I won't have the shakes. Not going to matter too much because I'm airbrushing tonight because, um, as requested by our community and viewers, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of um, larger scales working on my panther model. Um, it is mostly put together. There are a few things to put on it. It's missing a turret at the moment. I know that's right beside me here. Um, I've left a lot of the tools off of it. I've also not put the spare tracks that are generally kept on the back of this particular variant um, because I thought, and I've not done a scale of this, uh, this size before, I thought that maybe it'd be better to paint them off the model. I've seen a lot of people painting them like most tutorials out there. In fact, all of the tutorials I've seen are just with the, the stuff on it. But I thought, oh, that's my first go. And it's taken me ages to do it as it is. So I'm just gonna, just gonna carry on. So yeah, I've left those tools and all the spare bits of track off of it. It's also got no wheels here, but they're all made and they're on a massive porcupine over here um, so that I can get to them easily with the airbrush. Um, and I've also got the turret here as well. Now I've, I've undercoated him already, so he's already been primed and he's already got the first color of all the different colors that I'm gonna be putting on him. I did forget to do the underside of the barrel when I did it, but that's not a problem because, and I thought I did a really good job of it at the time, but the paint has shown me otherwise. But the um, the seam, because the, the cannon came in two halves, there is actually a join here, which I thought I sanded out, but I didn't do a good enough job. So a uh, part of the show, or maybe just another time, is going to be re-sanding that down and, and getting this um, back to a level of standard that I'm satisfied with. Um, because that will show up and I sanded every individual piece and I don't want one little thing to ruin it. So yeah, that's that's that. Um, and yeah, I've also got the tracks really cool um, because they're not individual links. They're actually a sort of rubberized plastic. They're not stretchy, which is good because you kind of have to pull them across the wheels to get them on. And they've got these little um, popper features, I suppose, that um, you would glue in place once they're in position and I'm going to make sure that the join in the tracks is somewhere up under here because I've actually got um, what the Germans called uh, Schürzen which is um, basically side skirts, bazooka plates to protect the tops of the tracks and the wheels etc. Um, they're going to be hanging down and covering it so wherever that little join is depending on how well or not I do it you won't be able to see it anyway hopefully. Um, but yeah I've never seen a, a material quite like this. I thought it was rubber but you'd expect rubber to be stretchy but there's very little given it at all. I really um, thought you were going to say uh, when you're talking about the barrel and, and leaving the, the fact you hadn't sprayed it, go, but it's okay, don't worry, nobody ever looks underneath. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> yeah. That's very blase, Danny, so not your normal approach. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, I will not be leaving it. <laughs> um, I'm not going to put the machine gun on it uh, because they do come with like an MG42 on the top, but I did a lot of research on it. Um, and it's very uncommon on Air Panther, especially the later models, because they were just turning the tanks out as quick as they could. They didn't really have an awful lot of time. Also, if they did have an MG42, they probably only have one, um, and they'd have that in the in the front. So they could take it out and put it on the top, but chances are, if you're um, going into a battle, uh, then you probably won't have a gun on the top because your guy in the turret will be keeping his head down anyway. So that was interesting. I thought I'd put it on there anyway because on my little tanks, I've just done it because guns, right? <laughs> so if I get one of my little, um, my little 1-100 scale Shermans, they've got a little bow gun here, little machine gun in the front, and I put them on the top. But again, apparently um, they had one. I had one gun for the whole tank. It'd be in the front or it'd be on the top. Very, very rarely would they ever have both sets. They would do. It's not. It wasn't like it was a rare, a totally rare thing, or you know, ever unseen. But um, yeah. So the scenes that you see in Fury with Brad Pitt and the the Easy Eight tank in there, where it just cruises in, just firing bullets out of every barrel it's got, just probably wouldn't have been the most common of sights. So yeah, that was that was quite an interesting little thing. You learn stuff doing this, right? Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, and because I'm going to be doing the colours 
of the later tanks for Germany. I've also got, if I get around to it, if I've got a little bit of time or a little bit of paint left over in my airbrush, I've got these um, Zvezda models. I've got the uh, King Tiger and uh, the Hunting Tiger, the Jagdity uh, here as well, which I used this one in a game of Water Tanker just the other day. And it is devastating. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, but yeah, cool. It's, if you want to fire the gun and watch everything die at the other end in one shot, that is the tank to take. Uh, anyway, yeah, cool. So I've got my... Um, I wanted to... I've got some source books here because I'm going to do this colour on the whole tank, but I, I want to do the camouflage on it. And I haven't got the camouflage colours in acrylics. I've got them in um, enamels, and I haven't really played with the airbrush with enamel tanks. So I'm undecided if I'm going to get acrylic versions of it or if I'm going to practice in the coming weeks with enamels in the airbrush it shouldn't be a problem in fact it's, m it's much easier to clean up with enamel paint because you could just reactivate it even weeks later with spirit as where acrylic dries in minutes if not seconds so there might be an advantage to it but I just I'd, stepping into the unknown about putting enamel paints in my airbrush I don't know how I feel about it yet so but I'm not going to be doing camouflage yet anyway but I thought I'd have a little look through here because this is one of my better books for camouflage references. The Panther Medium Tank, page 42. I always have good reference. Uh, it's reference is something I never normally used to have. So uh, here is the Model D, um, the late Model D. Actually, I think that's one of the earlier versions because unlike all the other tanks uh, in, the, in the Wehrmacht at the time, um, the Panther didn't start off on um, Ausführung A which is Model A or Variant A. All the other ones did, so like the Panzer IV, Stugs, etc. They all started from A, B, C, D, and they, some of them went up to like F, whatever, even J. But I think that the Panther actually started off on D. Maybe it was B, and then went D. G, I think, is the later one, which is what mine is. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of references in here to colours. I don't think I'm going to do anything quite like what's on this page here, uh, where you've got the really big blocks although that is quite fun also no camouflage on the wheels on that particular on that particular image there so <laughs> that saves a little bit of effort um i quite like this traditional sort of i don't know wiggly line um scheme so i might just do that i've seen a lot of photographs and pictures and drawings and all sorts of stuff where they've got camouflage on the wheels they haven't got camouflage um so yeah i don't really know what i'm going to do with that but I'm, I'm a long way away from doing camouflage at the moment. I just thought that I'd get some reference out to have a little look. Cool. Typically, I always do my tanks quite dark, but I think I need to brave it a little bit and go lighter. So I'm going to be pushing my modulation range for the lighter colours today. Um, I just got to reach over and get my paints up here. Because oh, I left them down there on the floor. So... Um, You've seen me use these before. Actually, Carl, I don't know if um, you've actually been on the show while I've used these, but I have actually used them in like two episodes, I think. So this is AK Interactive. They're a very good brand. They're very, very similar to Ammo MIG. I was talking to Adrian, who's in our comments right now, um, earlier on in the week about what paints I use that are good for airbrush and good for brushing at the same time. And he actually went with Ammo MIG. They're really, really good sets. I've got um, the British version of the modulation sets for them. They are really silky smooth paints. Uh, I've got a smart set which has four paints in it for the British stuff with ammo MIG. AK stuff comes with oh, cat hair. <laughs> uh, it comes with six paints. As I've said before, basically it just is the same colour but in various levels of saturation, working your way right up from uh, shadow, dark base, standard base, light base, and then there is highlights, and then there is shine, which is almost a white colour. They do need. Oh, get away from me, can here. They do need a bit of a shake because they have settled uh, over the weeks of sitting down there. Um, but they're really, really smooth to use. Uh, just to clarify, yes, you can use airbrush paints with your brush. Um, they are just much thinner because they have to go through the airbrush as it is. Um, so you, you want the, the, the standard or accepted um, phrases to be like milk. So you want it to have the same sort of consistency as milk. Um, if it goes too runny, uh, too runny, it's just not going to give you a really good coat and it probably will run and just generally have a really naff sort of appearance when it hits the plastic too thick and it's going to struggle to get through the nozzle. It's going to cake up inside. It will dry, build up and it will block very, very quickly um, and it will spatter. And there's all sorts of different things. You can get spatter, spider webbing, and it just all kind of gets away from you. A I lot of... don't actually use milk. 
don't actually there. don't actually Have use milk. Out. You could yeah. put milk in it to kind of get the idea of it, I suppose. I've not done that, but it's not going to harm your piece of metal. <laughs> um, and milk milk doesn't dry like that. And if it does, bad milk. <laughs> bad. <laughs> bad milk. Um, so yeah, I, I was actually thinking. I've had a lot of um, questions and inquiries about um, airbrushes, and I didn't want this show to necessarily become tutorials because I don't think I'm that good so i didn't really want to go down that route but i, I do get a lot of questions and, and i'm here to support that community so if you I, I am going to do it but if there are things that you want me to talk about do separate videos on little, little tutorials or how i do it kind of videos i'm more than happy to do that uh, just when i get the time um to set aside you know a day's worth of whatever it need, i need to plan for then i will do like a whole video just talking about what i use with my airbrush this is um harder and steenbeck which is a german one it's very I, I was kind of advised to go with him because you know the um germany has, has, a, has a bit of a reputation for precision made stuff um they do a lot of different types of airbrushes this was a very good entry just above entry level one uh, and there's actually a pro version of this one as well where on this protective back here they actually have like a little nut that sticks through the side so you can adjust um how far you actually pull it um but it's a bit more expensive anyway i'm kind of going into the realms of stuff i didn't really want to go on about but yeah so this is my airbrush um i do want to get a larger hopper for it because when i'm doing larger models like this um i run out quite quickly so um i have done one coat on here i'm going to focus mostly maybe even just solely on the main chassis here tonight um and i'm going to start by i don't know whether i need to go over and do another coat of this color over it in a couple of places it is a little thin um, like there's a couple of bits here uh, and a couple of bits down here but i think actually by the times i get around to going over it with lots of different colors i don't think that's going to be a massive issue and as i've learned from one of our viewers who has his own youtube channel um is very very good at painting um james khan if you're watching hi james uh, i learned that actually by spraying randomly in random patterns over and building up you kind of get that irregular effect that you would get on a normal vehicle anyway so I'm just gonna go for it i think i've made my decision i am gonna go straight in i think with a shadow and then i'm gonna build up because i like to go in the middle for the, the middle color there and then I go straight down to the dark one and then I build up so if I go too heavy I can always come back up again if I need to that seems to be my process um, we've just had uh, Simon just come on and said uh, he's found out that milk is very good uh, to clean stone with and I was just really? wondering if there's a story behind that was it an accident were you were you experimenting with all sorts of liquids to uh, to clean stone uh, it's just a uh, did you or, did you, a, or did you spill it once ago? Look at those stones, they've come up beautifully. Yeah, they've come up lovely, they yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have. That's, that's peculiar. Yeah. I suppose you have to rinse it off afterwards because if it kind of like sun bakes, it's going to be awful. <laughs> yeah, just all the neighbourhood cats flocking. Yeah, oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, I've got a strong stomach, man, but milk. Oh. Yeah. Um, so a couple of other features that I use in my mixture. Airbrush thinner. That's exactly what it says on the bottle it thin, thins it down um, and i also use airbrush flow improver so this one especially <laughs> different pigments different brands as well have ever so slightly different consistencies um and i've, I've noticed that going from different colors even within the vallejo range um some r are really hard to push through uh, if by applying a couple of drops of this dependent and you have to kind of get used to it uh which one does what uh you apply a couple of drops of that mix up in the hopper and it thins it down put too much of that in you're going to get a runaway effect and and the flow improver um, there's also flow retarder as well and i don't know if they're the same thing i think they're different i don't know what the difference is uh this has been a godsend for me really put one drop of this into a whole hopper and it basically just slows the drying process of the paint down so it stops it kind of um drying inside the inside the nozzle which as it kind of collects and beads up it will dry even to an, like a, a macro or microscopic level more paint will collect on it and it snowballs does that make sense yeah um so you want to stop it from sort of doing that basically so uh i'm just going to i'm going to put about 10 drops in here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's actually quite a little bit less than i'd want so i'm going to just double that three four five six seven you eight, haven't heard nine just while you're doing that ten. um adrian what are you painting this evening i saw your pictures on the Easy 8 Facebook page. I always try and check that at least once a week, get on there, have a look, see what people uh, have been putting up. 
I know Leslie, he's put up a great Soul Grinder. I think I missed that last week, but again, that's looking like a phenomenal model. Uh, so Adrian, what are, what are you on? Was it the Death Watch that you finished off the top of my head? If not, I know you, I think you posted a picture of your uh, watch Captain Artemis um, as well went on there. And I know Keslin put up uh, like the 40k scale battle tech. Yeah, it was looking well. probably a really good job just done on that one. I was actually speaking to Keslin just a couple of days ago. Oh no, sorry, yesterday. I beg your pardon. Unfortunately, oh. she's working, won't be able to join us today. Um, but always watches the show back on replay. Uh, watches back on tablet because she hasn't got a PC at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, saving up for it, but she it makes makes a habit of you know coming to watch us if she is working, which is nice. Thanks very much. So I've got a drop of airbrush thinner, a drop of flow improver, and uh, 20 drops of the color in the hopper. And I can see it's quite hard to probably see in the camera here, uh, but it's it's flowing quite thin. It does gather on the side of the hopper in there. Not a lot I can really do about that. I like to mix it up inside the hopper with a brush and then just wash that off and then knock everything over. Um, I don't spray onto my mat because I'm a tidy person. I always have a piece of paper. You can see this is the one I've been using in the past. So I'm just going to basically work out where I want shadow to go. There's lots of different ways of using a modulation set on, on how you want to approach it. Um, you can do zenithal lighting. You can do object source lighting. Zenithal lighting is basically saying that the sun is shining in this direction. So the light is going to hit here. So it's going to be shadowed over here. Um, and th there's lots of uh, modulation painting is not a realistic effect. It just kind of makes more out of what you're trying to do with it so i'm not trying to go realistic i'm trying to make modulation work as realistically as i can whilst making it look kind of cool at the same time it's a model it's not a real tank and i don't care um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a lot of shadow up in here so it's a good place for me to practice the flow of my airbrush is get it right up underneath all the skirts in here and i'm probably i'm not going to go any lighter along these axles here not going to go any lighter than the base color here i don't want any highlights down there because it's all going to be greasy and grubby down there probably going to do a lot of um, shadow effect on the back end when i've done my smaller 28 millimeter and 15 millimeter tanks i've done a lot of shadows on the top at the back up here and then working highlights into it and then yeah i'm just going to see where it goes I'm just, basically i just like to use the airbrush and if at the end of it i've got a rubbish looking model i've had fun doesn't matter <laughs> I've had a bit of a spray around, see yeah, what happens. Yeah, don't, I don't care. No, they I have fun to use. I've never used one. Uh, I know we spoke about this before. They do just look quite good fun as well. Just to have a little sort of yeah. play with. It, it, it took me a long time to, to kind of get into it. Um, there's the compressor working in the background there, if you can hear that. Um, so... I've had my pressure up too high in the past. I've, I've, I've recently learned that I have, I have a, a slightly lower pressure than you think. Um, so I, I'm going to probably be playing around with pressure a lot today. I've had to turn it up a bit higher because varnish is a bit thicker, so you need a bit more power behind it, and I've been varnishing my zone traps recently. So here we go. And less is more. Like, just build it up slowly. If you go in too heavy with the airbrush, it's... You're just going to cake it and you're going to go through all of your paint so fast. Um, and it's also, if, if you're doing it wrong, if you make a mistake, it's so much easier to kind of cover up or hide, you know. And, and then we've got, um, we've got Adrian. He's actually he's found some motivation, which is nice, just to finish off his Thousand Suns. So arm pairing. So is that modelling, I take it, just working out? posing that's one of the, the bits of the hobby i really enjoy is when you get to that kind of stage you're working on poses trying to make make dudes look cool and dynamic and, and it's harder on the older kits as well they look a lot more static and stationary and blocky but yeah they're no, very cool simon just for everyone who's interested says semi-skimmed milk is the best for cleaning so <laughs> little inside tip for you semi-skimmed specifically <laughs> yeah must be just that right fat content to really <laughs> that's really bizarre isn't it well you learn something right if i do something with stone i want to clean it up there you go <laughs> who found that out and what were they doing at the time yeah or he's a uh, uh, silent decided to, to haze us on his first first appearance in the comments, and he's going to giggle to himself when we come back on the show and go, "I tried to clean my stone with milk. It just smelled <laughs> really bad." And <laughs> <laughs> cackling, cackling away maniacally to himself. Got a lot of cats in the neighbourhood. Got them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're really getting those from tuna as well, it's really good for the stone. <laughs> really, it's really good for cleaning the backs of your radiators. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ay, ay, ay. What's there? So what's obviously we've done some historical stuff on here before, looking at this, uh, the Zvezda tanks, but obviously at a much different scale. And obviously we've said less is more when we were doing those tanks. Um, I've yeah. still got mine. I think I'm still really, really looking forward to mine. Less is more. Um, too much. Try and go too much detail on those smaller models. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen it as well before. I've seen examples of it. It just doesn't look right especially i find with the historical stuff where you're really trying to get a bit more realism in rather than the sort of fantasy style of painting um but with this scale what kind of things are you expecting are you expecting to put a bit more detail work on there yeah I'm, I'm expecting to be using most if not all of my effects so all of the weathering effects that i've got yeah. um, i'll be quite quite disappointed if i don't get the majority of them out for it so i'm going to be doing a lot of work with um modulation and, and you know d doing this kind of fake shadow effect on it and once yeah. i've got all the different components with that on there um i'll kind of put all the pieces together get all the tools and equipment on there and whatever and then i'm going to go um, heavy in with the weathering so lots of lots of grime um lots of pin washing because that's an, an effect before weathering it actually helps with the weathering effect because it keeps you know it helps bring all the um recessed details out like for example on the top with all the hatches kind of brings all that out and then you can do um grime on top of that as well um and then um i can do rust effects um I, I'm, I'm really nervous about doing the tracks because I've never done good tracks before. Uh, if you look at the um, the cover photo on um, Easy 8 Facebook, um, you'll notice that there's a 28mm bolt action uh, Tiger, which I was really happy with. The tracks actually slipped when I was making them. Um, so that if you look at the back, you can see a gap in the tracks, but it's really hard to spot. They look really good on that picture, um, but actually in real <laughs> life, I wasn't too chuffed with them. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been watching different videos on how different um, pros basically um, do their tracks and i think most of it is is basically weathering like they, they they were bare metal they they were very rarely ever painted if they were they were painted black as soon as they touch the ground and they do anything because the tank's about 60 tons then they you know inevitably wear straight down to bare metal so there's that effect on them as well um and then yeah the rest of it's just caking in dust effects and i've got some pigment um which i think will look really good um, I've just taken the nozzle protector off of my airbrush. Some people might want to do this with Ooh. theirs. It does expose Crazy. the needle at the end, so you've got to be very careful about what you do there, because if you damage that needle, it's all over for your airbrush, and a new one will cost you £30. <laughs> so be careful with it. I take mine off for doing airbrushing. It allows me to clean the needle off when it starts to get a bit clogged uh, much easier, uh, because the needle protector on this one is a complete round cylinder sort of shape. Um, the pro version of this one, has one which has got two prongs so you can kind of wipe it from the sides but the needles are slightly different diameter so um you have to buy them in different sets they can be quite expensive so i haven't bothered i like to do this but before i put it in my cleaning pot i make sure that i put the nozzle protector back on so yeah just a little something for you um so yeah i, I, I use rust i've got some like um green slime effects like where water effects but that's more for dioramas and stuff i just bought it because i'm an impulse buyer um and then i've got fuel stains and all sorts of stuff like that bit by bit I'll, I'll build it up one of the nice things actually because obviously the historical miniatures is not something i've really dabbled in outside of airfix planes yeah. yeah that's kind of my that was my foray into it but what's nice with going on our instagram page the easy Ache instagram page is once you look at those things it then picks up the algorithm for it and it quite easily finds other people that do it so yeah it's good for that inspiration side of things as well it's helped me out before going on having a look at ours and then from there you go on your explore page and then suddenly you've got more users that are putting those kinds of same sort of content out you just get that inspiration it's really nice you can go in and have a look i know you you send me quite uh, some, some interesting things as well you see something in the week you send me over a picture especially if it's something we've been talking about with sort of plasma effects yeah yeah, yeah. Like plasma that. coils and lighting effects yeah they've been really cool to look at because so, some of the way people have, have kind of worked out their own schemes that's phenomenal some of the effects people are getting is brilliant 
So what I'm doing with this this um, shadow effect here is I'm doing the underside of the entire tank. I could be well within my rights just to coat the whole thing brown because it's where the most shadow is. Uh, but what I'm going to try and do is is not go too heavy so that I can use the darkest shadow to pick out some of it, like to go around some of these like, little hatches. They're not hatches. They're like little access ports for maintenance and oil or whatever. The Panther had no access hatches underneath whatsoever because they had torsion bars like 60 of the things or whatever it was. So there was no space for it. But they do have these little patterns on here. So I'd just like to basically get a little bit of a like a shadowy line on here around the hatches like like that. It's probably a bit too much there really. Um, and then as I apply the different levels of highlights, if you like, um, I can kind of make a definition around them. So I'm just going to do a light covering of this colour over the whole bottom, but using the colour underneath, come on, using the colour underneath to kind of change the hue, if you like. Look at me using terms that we learned a little while ago. <laughs> Ooh, that's our colour wheel day. Yeah, I know, right? I love it. That's been, that's been so useful, that colour wheel. Crazy. Luke's actually just, uh, we were just having a chat in the comments, um, he's gone for a Gorgon Hormagorn in his diorama. Okay, have, so. I've been calling it a scene in the comments because I don't have a clue how to spell diorama. Um, <laughs> but, but so he gets that contrast. So he gets that black white against the red green, um, which is, yeah, which is awesome. Again, yeah, think about those color pairings. Choo choosing your colors is so important. Like when, once you start getting into it, I'm really trying to push not just my motivation to get stuff done, but I'm trying to really push my own personal development. And a lot of that is actually pushing up my boundaries of my comfort, you know? I am, um, of course, I think I think most of these shows is finished with me saying, yep, yeah, I'm going to try and cut some time out in the week to get some more <laughs> hobbies done. That was You're busy, man. Again. Yeah, this week turned out to be busier than most. It's just, just, yeah, just from, what, from what you were saying before we went live, it sounds like it's been yeah. a bit of a hectic day, man. It's been a hectic day and a hectic week. But do you know what? By next week, I might just have carved out some time to get some more hobbies done. But you, <laughs> you've actually got more finished than I have. And even though... Um, your technique, your style is 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 much, is much quicker. quicker than mine. Yeah. Um, like it still looks really good and deep, and and like a lot of time and attention has been put into it. You've you've got more stuff done than I have. It's just you know it's just nice getting anything done because yeah we speak about this all the time, but I've never been into the painting part of the hobby, and I am really that's my big key goal is to have that crusade horse painted ready to go. Yeah, yeah, we get. Yeah, there. There's a few more models that need to be purchased um, to, to fill out the roster. Oh, I'm glad we're talking about per purchasing models. Do you remember last Ooh. week I was talking about yeah. maybe buying a, a Lictor for my Tyranids? Um, yep. I'm going to hold off for five. a little bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I was looking at them. Um, I'm, I'm well up for doing it. I'm not. Don't think I'm necessarily breaking any of my rules about getting stuff done from my backlog. Really, I just think it's just going to help boost up my crusade force a little bit um but i have got a couple of other projects i want to do i was talking about that old modeled hive titan that i've got that i'd like to do so i'm going to focus on getting that done keep within the boundaries of you know getting yeah, old stuff painted yeah. yeah um but i i was like I'm, i am going to treat myself to something uh, and i've been looking at getting some mdf um terrain laser cut mdf terrain for my 15 millimeter tanks because i was playing uh water tanker like i said um just earlier on i was playing water tanker a couple of days ago i had a great time playing it and my dad made me a load of really quick scenery loads of hedges and trees and a couple of ruined buildings and whatever um but there's a, there's a whole i guess there's a whole part of the game that we've yet to unlock playing it and that is like maneuvering like proper tight maneuvers around street corners that we haven't really kind of gone into because we didn't really have very many buildings so in a conversation with my dad who is live in the comments right now hi dad um we were just having a little foray around on uh on the internet now one of the people who i mentioned in the comments colin farron at um charlie foxtrot makes mdf models but unfortunately doesn't make them in that scale goes as low as 20 mil um 
but not 15, which is a bit of a shame because this stuff is absolutely superb. If you want 28 mil or 20 mil, um, then he's definitely the guy to go to, and I would do if he if he made it. But I was looking, TT Combat makes some really nice, really, really affordable, um, but really not shoddy like, at all. Like you'd expect for being as cheap as he is, that they would be quite poor but they are not they are really good and i also found empires at war which a little bit more costly but a little bit more detail so i was going to buy like a couple of nice individual buildings from uh empires at war and then i was going to buy like a little cluster of cottages from uh, tt combat and i'll do them up as a part of the um, part of the show one day because uh, we don't do an awful lot of terrain stuff, and I, I said from the from the off you know, from the start that we'd like to do a little bit, but just make them up, you know, build them all, put them together with some PVA, and then um, get some paint on them or some effects on them, um, because they're really affordable and it's all small stuff, and you can just kind of put it in a box and have it stored away. So yeah, that's that's probably what I'm going to buy for now. So no lictors for the time being, Kyle. No lictor. Oh no, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an old lictor model, but it's not painted up in my colour scheme. I got I got commended um, uh, and appraised for my color scheme, saying that I'd achieved um, a non-cartoony level of um, yellow. Um, this person was commenting on on, it on Facebook, not on the Easy Eight page, but on the Tyranids um, forum page. Um, which, if anyone's interested, I can link in the description if you want. Um, and it's basically saying that they find normally yellow to be quite flat and cartoony, but apparently they really like what I've done. So I was like, thanks very much. That means a lot. Nice to get a little bit of feedback on something I thought I wasn't doing a very good job with. I mean, we touched on this before, but yellow is a difficult colour. It can be, yeah. It can be really cartoony. Yeah. I I think I I did at the end of... I think it might be just as went off air. I told you the secret that I'd unlocked for my yellow assault intercessor helmets. And that was using... Paint old that, paint. It was old and had gone and solidified. And it. I thought, oh, just give it a try on an old helmet. And it's exactly what I wanted. So it worked beautifully. I've been experimenting with orange um, from the airbrush on this model that Kesslin actually gave me, which I've yeah. still yet to finish. I started painting <laughs> up this mech here. When you apply it in thin layers, over a white base it comes out yellow build it up and it becomes orange so you get kind of like a rendering like a shade almost like what i'm doing here with modulation so that's been interesting playing around with that a little bit um but i saw on a tutorial that actually pink is a really good undercoat for airbrushing for uh, yellow so if you yeah did you if, look in, did, was there a reason did they sort of explain the kind of color sign it, it were, behind? It, is if the guy was using inks and not using like normal paints so it was all about like saturations and you know playing with the you know the saturation of the color to, to enhance the hues um and in a lot of cases when you when you apply um like heavy pink uh base to a to a yellow ink like it just it just builds up the saturation and um yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting to watch. It's, it's not something that I thought about uh, bringing up, so I didn't link it. But again, if anyone's interested, I, I'll quite happily find that video and I'll stick it in the comments. Talking about comments that we're actually getting, um, I was actually speaking to the dude at um, Blightforge, um, who was last week's um, community page, if you remember, oh, Community the, Spotlight. The, the crazy yeah. uh, glow effects on his weapons. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like saying, like, hey, you know, sorry for. Um, like the, the dodgy show when we were showing you stuff off. He was like, no, nah, man, it's really good. He watched the whole thing. So I was like, thank you very much. If you're watching now, hi, dude. Thanks for coming along again. Good to see you again, dude. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and he said that he really enjoyed the show and he found me to be a really engaging host. Thanks very Yay. much. That's really nice to say because, yeah, I don't get an awful lot of feedback about how, you know, I am, you are, we are on the show, just about the show itself normally, which is always nice. It is. It's, it's weird seeing you paint this tank after watching you paint the smaller scale. I'm like, oh my gosh, Danny's hands shrunk. Uh, shrunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was getting ready to set up, and I normally, before the show, like, normally a couple of hours before, but I was a bit late today because I was eating. Um, I had to, I normally set up all the all the zoom and focus and everything long before the show starts. Uh, but I, it's like, oh, I've got so much stuff to do. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we're, on a, we're on a bigger scale today. Yeah. So I'm interested to know what um, what scales people you know 
have played before enjoy you know have, enjoy painting and playing with um, this is my first larger scale i've never done anything over 28 millimeter before this is my first time into it I i'm having a wave of a time I've, I've been using it as a bit of a project for, away from other projects if that if you catch my drift yeah. so i yeah. want to have a rest from doing warhammer and i come back to this one i really should have finished it a long time ago but i've just i've just been really enjoy I, I really enjoyed putting it together i suppose i'm nervous about painting it I get like that. I'm like that with sort of my more elite Blood Angel units. I've kind of shied away painting them because I want to make sure I do a good job on them. Yeah. yeah. I have so run out of paint. Myself. So what I like to do is just flush it through quickly with a little bit of water. Um, just to kind of get rid of anything that's building up in there. Uh, you can, of course, do cleaners. But cleaners can be expensive and you will go through it pretty quickly. So, yeah, if you need downsizes uh, Well, it's not going to have the um, the quality that a uh, the, the properties that a cleaner will have. So obviously, like uh, acrylic thinners and acrylic thinners, uh, oh, sorry, acrylic thinners and cleaners are designed to um, thin them, thin acrylics down, and, and get rid of them, much in the same way that spirits will work on enamels, etc., or oils. Um, so it's not going to be as powerful. But I would certainly recommend uh, running um, a cleaner through at the end of your paint session. But you still don't necessarily need to do it with neat. I have here a little dropper bottle made up with 50-50 water and cleaner. Yeah. Um, but if it's particularly blocked or I've got a, a troublesome solution that I've put through it that I know is a problem, then I do have a little bottle here of neat cleaner as well. Uh, so I, I do have it as a go-to. Just don't make a habit of doing it all the time. It's um, it's unnecessary, and you and you'll just go through it. And if you really want to get down to that sort of level, it's bad for the environment, I suppose. You know, there's there's, there's no need. I've just looked at our view count. It's incredible. We've got a really good view count today. Thanks very much for coming along. Everybody. It really means a lot. Um, don't forget to subscribe, as it says at the top of the the screen there, because that really helps us out. So I'm gonna put a bit more of this shadow effect in there, and you can see what I've done is I've this is the top. This is how it looks here before I started, and now underneath. We're getting that kind of shadowed effect. It's very patchy at the moment. That's a kind of a deliberate move. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep on enhancing this area that I've done, these kind of lines, and then I'm going to just filter over it by spraying ever so lightly and just kind of builds up that saturation, builds up that saturation. It'll also build it up more on what I've already done, so they'll become darker, and then it'll just affect the hue underneath as well. And then I'm going to hit it with a lighter version, a lighter version, and I'll be more selective about where I'm putting it as we go. And then I'll do the same on the top. Um, it's going to be a very long process, and I don't, I don't reckon I'm going to get much more than a couple of colours into just on the hull here today. But you know, it's just nice to kind of go through something different. I, I was making this as a personal project, but I've had a lot of um, outcry to do something like this. Obviously, Adrian's bought his um, his Tiger Two, I think it was. He said, didn't he, from from Revel? I think it was. Um, and he wanted to have a bit of inspiration, kind of going along with that. And I am always happy to help inspire and motivate. Yeah, it was a yeah, it was a 135th Tiger 2. Tiger 2, it's a beast of a tank, man. Uh, my old man um, sent me some uh, images, like photos from World War II of like captured tanks and things. Um, and we, we're always sharing images like that because any kind of um, you know inspirational photograph to kind of stock images and things like that are really handy to, to work from as reference. Um, and there's a picture of the Sturmtiger, which I've, see, I've seen. Um, I've, I stood in front of at the tank museum, the um, Tiger II and the Hunting Tiger, which is um, based off of the chassis of the Tiger II, but they've just made the casemate, the area where the turret was, into one giant, huge fixture. Um, if I show you on the little, here it is. Here's the little 15 um, millimeter. So they take the turret off and they just built it and they put a massive gun. It's, it can't have a turret because the gun on the inside, the breech is just too huge. And it's, it's enormous and it just doesn't fit in the museum properly it's in a separate part but they made about i think it was about 18 sturm tigers and they are basically hunting tigers with what i can only label as a dustbin launcher it is a cannon so wide you could crawl down on it and in fact it's probably easier in an emergency situation to climb out through the breach than it was through the hatches um it was just immense I don't think they ever really did an awful lot because they were just prone to breakdowns by the time they got anywhere. They the numbers weren't good enough. Uh, but anyway, I saw a picture of one of a guy stood in front of it, a GI. They'd obviously captured one. 
It's huge. Like, it's immense. There's none that survive today, Sturmtigers. At the tank museum, they've got the hunting tiger in the corner, and beside it, they've got one of the very few cannons that was, uh, you know, that survived the war. Um, the rest of them, I think that, that one particular one was taken by the British Army um, to kind of investigate and, you know, kind of look at, etc. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and then I sort of just basically kind of look at it. Um, but then the rest were all just um, cut up and destroyed uh, after the war. Which, looking back now, a bit sad. <laughs> but at the time, yeah, totally, get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, it's not what you're thinking about at the time, yeah. is it? Sort of, no, no, no. Um, um, just to say hello to Darren as well. Darren just popped up. I just noticed he came into the into yeah. the show. Nice oh, to see you again, Darren. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah love a big tank. Whey. Darren was showing Maybe. some pictures of his of his own 135th stuff a little while ago. He's got some beautiful... Um, models that he's made up there are all in the uh, like white camouflages as well uh, I think I actually put them on the Facebook page so if you are interested have a little look through there Dan will correct the, me now if I got that wrong was it the 88s that got cut up the anti-tank 88s yeah I think that was it yeah. that's the one they were oh they were brutal that's, that's a whole different lecture that how effective those 88s were they were a good bit of kit but no those models look fantastic as well I'm glad you made it for this one, Darren. I know you are a fan of the, uh, the historical stuff in the tanks. And it's big tank day. <laughs> big, big tank big day. Tank day. I, I, obviously, I want to do more 135th scale stuff after this one. In fact, what do I do? I would like to do an easy eight because, you know, the show, right? Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. But I also, you know, my favourite is the Panzer IV. And I saw the Panzer IV at the tank museum. I went over and gave it a bit of a cuddle. Now, I was told immediately <laughs> to stop that <laughs> <laughs> by the people who I was with. Um, it's, just a, it's just an old childhood favourite. I think it's a really nice looking tank. I know what it's designed for. I know who it was designed by. But, you know, looking at it now, I could just appreciate it for what it is, which is just a, you know, a very good piece of engineering. Um, I just think it's a pretty looking thing as well. So I would like to do one of those too. Panzer That's what I say bye, bye to Simon. He's got a pop off. He's got, he's got chores to do. Less, thanks very much but, for popping um, along, Simon. Yeah, nice to see you. Thanks for coming Simon. along. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for your support. Take it easy. Darren be... uh, as well. It's just any he does like in some one thirty fifth scale. It must yeah, be nice of course he does. having done some of the smaller scales to step up to that and be able to put a bit more of that deep, that a bit more of that effort into that the is, that is that is exactly what is happening here, mate. Yeah. Yeah, it looks it looks it looks like a really nice kit as well. Even just looking at it. It's got some incredible detail on it. All the little handles, there's some features on there that I actually had to kind of make. So for example, on the back, these exhausts here are quite different from the earlier models of the Pan Panther. Um, and these little exhausts here have these little tiny brackets that hold them against the um, the hull. And this stops them from kind of flopping around and moving around. They were shot up and dented all the time, but they still need to like, be braced. Um, but they have these little grooves that would slot into uh, sorry, little slots that would slot into grooves that actually built into the side of the, the, the hull. But those little slots didn't exist on this kit. Um, so I had to uh, mark out where they were going to go and it took tweezers to kind of get them in position. That took a long time, a lot of confidence to build up to it. Um, where some other very fine details on here. All the little handles on the hatches, they were really good fun. Um, on the inside of the turret, on the back here, this hatch um, actually operates. I've glued it shut, but I built it all on the inside because I just wanted the experience of doing it. Yeah. But the actual mechanism on the inside has like a triple lever system in there, where it's, yeah, it's really cool. And that, all the breach is, um, <laughs> apart from being plastic, operational, should I say. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's really good. It has a little, um, little handle on the top of the turret here which once you open this hatch up you would hold on to this much like getting into a large van or you know truck one above your head as you climb in there but i broke it twice when i was trying to put that one in um so that's actually made out of a piece of wire that i had to build and bend and yeah that, that was i was quite proud of that when it went on and you can barely tell the difference and you wouldn't know unless i told you so yeah it's, it was it's been really fun putting it all together there is one thing about this whole model that i'm not entirely satisfied with and it, uh, being the only thing that I, I, you know, that I can find I'm not um, unhappy about it at all really um, but I'm, I'm going to have to make something to counter it if I just put the turret back on here um, when the turret is on natural gravity makes the turret armor touch the hull armor and it didn't happen they actually were up by a little bit because there are some little rivet details and things like that. If you just turn it around it touches and stops from spinning around the actual turret did sit up about an inch 
maybe even a little bit less than that. So if I lift it up, you can see there's a bit of a gap under there now. Drop it back down. Yep, and I don't want the paint to be scraped or it to not be able to turn or whatever. So I'm going to try and make like a, um, a little lifter. It's only going to be like a piece of plastic card or something super thin, maybe even not even plastic card just here so that the pressure of that just lifts the turret up a little bit that's going to be quite complicated and then i'll have to paint that in afterwards but yeah whatever who cares so um, i'm having a bit of trouble here painting um if you have a look uh on some of the raised edges of details um the paint's not really getting in there very much and because i've got quite a dark shadow color it's um it's quite easy to notice so i'm just that's why it's taking me so long on the bottom here is just trying to get that paint to go into these little corners and crevices etc my paint has just dried on my needle there we go shift that off and we are just a few minutes out from having a little break or about 10 minutes and then we'll come back for part two so i'll take us over to our our little intermission waiting page Darren's Here we go. Up there with a, a cardboard washer. A cardboard washer. For the uh, tank. For so they actually the is, like a, is, like a, is a cardboard washer like an actual thing that I can I can purchase? Okay, no, I it, imagine it would be very hard to make one. Or, or is he or is he just saying make a cardboard washer? Yeah. Or is it something that you can buy specifically anyway. for models? Yeah, I quite like making things. And look, it give you a chance to upcycle something as well. That's always a good thing. Yeah, save the environment wherever possible, man. Yeah. <laughs> just check. Sometimes, just in case anybody's put anything on the Facebook during the show, I know some people like to kind of keep us updated with what they're doing. And they should do. I want to know. Uh, yeah. I did see um, Willowbrook put up his flight stands. Mellowbrook. Trying to come up with... Oh, what did I say? Willowbrook. Ah, Mellowbrook. <laughs> That's your new uh, name. His, uh, yeah, it's sticking now. The new flight stands. Yes. As an alternative. They're apparently, they, cool. they are coin holders for coin collectors. They work, man. They're yeah. really good, yeah. They look real sturdy as well. They're not going to go tobogganing off the table. Hopefully not, yeah. Excellent. And they were magnetised on as well. Oh, even better. Very cool. So no little tiny bits of plastic they're going to snap off at the bottom, which is yeah. what he was trying to get away from, yeah. I'd say that was a really good... A bit, of, a bit of initiative taken there. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, right. Ah, oh, there we go. Got a nice bit of saturation in there. Hey. Just try not to rush it because, like I said earlier, you can you can overdo it with airbrush paints. You can go in too heavy, you go too thick, and you just get this kind of caked on thing. And I know that tanks wear, right? The problem is when you when you're painting a model, if you if you do something that looks messy deliberately, it looks like you've done the model messy. So. People go, oh, you messed that bit up, didn't you? And you're like, no, it no, looks like that. <laughs> so yeah. so I, I do try to make them look a bit neater. Just trying to make sure that I get all the different angles that I need to to stop all these dodgy little unnecessary highlights coming through. Um, you, a couple more comments just gone in there. Darren just said, yeah, cut up a breakfast cereal box. So it's that, okay. that thin of a card. Um, I, and J Jeff said he's got some ultra thin plastic cards. Cool, so brilliant. Options. Yeah. I use I use breakfast cereal card for everything. I've actually because I've got a couple of like nice sort of coloured lights in the studio here um, that don't really project up very far, and so it's kind of a, almost a waste of money really. And you can't really see it on this size screen. It's only when it goes to full screen. Um, but I, I'm making <laughs> little uh, projection lamps for them out of breakfast cereal card and a bit of tin foil. Yeah. It's oh, amazing okay. what you you know what what you can find in the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Anyway, well, I've, I think I've finished that basic bit at the bottom there. I'm going to move on to the top of the hull. Um, I think I might go and grab myself a cup of tea because I'm a bit parched at the moment. I'd like a brew. Um, of course, if you need to have a quick rest, maybe rest your eyes, stretch your legs, or perhaps uh, go and change your painting water, you should definitely go and change your painting water. Carl, you've got to go and get your models, haven't you? I do. I need to break up the death company and get a brew on the go. So... And get your specs. You said you want to get your glasses. Yes. Yeah, don't forget your glasses. You forget, weeks, where would you be without me? My glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, brilliant. It's a great opportunity to have a 10 minute break if you want to, or in the meantime, you can listen to some jazz. I'll see you in a minute. Cheers.
and I'm back. I was getting a bit concerned. I couldn't hear myself on a mic test during the break because uh, my compressor was going off in the background. It was just so loud. Um, welcome back from the break. Um, Kyle's also here. Um, but I just thought that before we go back to what I was doing, uh, just to remind you that if you are new here, uh, thanks very much for coming along. It's not a tutorial. It's just a club where you can come along and find some company, maybe a bit of motivation to get your models painted, work through the backlog of grey plastic that you've had sat in the cupboard or the basement or wherever for all those years uh, and get stuff done with us here live. Um, don't forget to you know find us on Facebook or on Instagram because we're not just on here on YouTube, we're on those other two places as well. Uh, don't forget to like us and follow us, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every little bit helps. We've had a lot of new subscribers and a lot of new viewers recently, so thank you very much for coming along and, and welcome to the show. Um, of course, uh, I'm not alone today. I'm here with Kyle. Here he is, back again. Um, during the break, you only got a brew. I said I was going to get one, but my girlfriend came down and gave me a, a glass of very expensive smelling wine. So cheers. Happy Friday. Ooh. Cheers! Oh, nice. too hot to drink just yet. Mate, that is that, that is a nice wine. That tastes expensive. Thanks very much. Right, well, so you went and got some models in a break. Yes. What, what'd you we get? Got death Company. Yeah. So I got five Death Company with jump packs because why would you not have jump packs on your killer machines? I've never understood it. Well, <laughs> there's, there's an option to just give them bolt guns. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's one of the issues I have with the Primaris Death Company is that they have bulk. It's not right. It doesn't fit the narrative, and we're narrative players. How many times yeah. have we said that before? Oh, I might thousands. Get a with it on. <laughs> narrative. Uh, narrative. Narr uh, narrative. I'd narrative actually, play. I hadn't, I'd forgotten. I'd actually started to pick out some of the detail on these models. So I'd gone over and picked out a lot of the red detail. Um, but I'm still just going to go over the entire model and dry brush it. And um, I'm then going to go back over and re pick out the red anyway. Um, and it will just act as a base, I reckon. So it should be fine to crack on with what I, found and what I was thinking of doing, which is very nice. Um, Sometimes yeah, it's only... nice to have a plan and not deviate, even if you come up with what you might be considered as a better idea. Mm. Sometimes it's just nice just to go with it. Just yeah. get the paint on the model. I'm just going to see how it goes. It's all a learning curve for me at this point. You know, I'm still doing a lot of, a lot of learning, even a lot of the basics and the fundamentals. In, in this part of the hobby, I'm still learning. So just kind always of learning. Enjoy that. Always learn. Yeah, that's and that's important, isn't it? Is to make sure that you're having fun. Because if you're not, then it's maybe it's not a hobby. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's, 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 a, it's a chore. It's a chore at that go point. go get a job. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I was just going to say one thing, Danny. You were just yes. talking about obviously liking and subscribing, but also, guys, don't forget to interact. Like, please. We want to see the pictures. I'm the worst person to be saying that because I'm shocking with my social media. But I know Danny's great and on top of it. So please send those pictures in. It doesn't matter if you're brand new to the hobby. It doesn't matter if you're a pro, anywhere in between. It's all just about no, the community. No, we want to see stuff sharing. from both pros, yeah. amateurs, yeah. whatever. doesn't matter. We're all exactly. here for the same reason. That's because we love doing it. Yeah. As a, yeah. You can put it up there because you're proud. You can put it up there because you want some feedback. You can whatever you want. If you just say, I'm just really happy with this and just want to put it up, perfect. If you pop up a picture and say, hey guys, has anyone got any tips on this? I'm sure there'll be a, a plethora of, of comments from some of our experienced watchers uh, about what you can do and try. So, And we do have yeah. pros watching, so thanks for coming along, pros. Love you, pros. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be great to see you on there. I was getting ready just to clean out my airbrush because it wasn't flowing so well. And then the blockage cleared and it went oh. <laughs> all over a particular area. Um, so I think I just need to finish off what I'm doing here. Just get this last little bit done, perhaps. Clear out the airbrush and then I'm going to give it a proper, not proper clean, proper clean, but I'm going to give it a good cycle through with some cleaner because I think it's that probably a little... Use the cleaner. Yeah. It, it's... When you need it, not just every time it needs... Uh... Yeah, yeah, just don't, don't overdo it, man. There's no need. Um... It's probably because I was doing some varnishing during the week and I, I did give it a good clean, but it might be a little bit left in there and it just, it's something for it to build up on. And like I was saying, the varnish is a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. And it can, oh, be, quite, yeah. can be quite troublesome. So yeah, is, it, is it a moment of truth? Is it, are, you, are you going in now? Yeah, we start. Is anyone else dry brushing at the moment? Does anyone else get oddly, I get oddly irritated with dry brushing with how much paint I waste. Just putting paint on the brush to take it back off again to then start painting your model. It just doesn't feel right. 
There's just something about it. Has anyone got any tips for dry brushing? I would love to hear anything. Do you get right. nervous when you're going in to start a new model or a, or a new I thing? New, a new, not necessarily a new technique learned, but a technique that's different from the one you've just done. So you're just doing like yeah, base layering and things like that. And you go, right, now I'm going to go do my dry brushing. I could yeah. ruin everything I've just done. Yeah, I get yeah, nervous that, all the time. That's more it. It's more once I've built up a... You know, the, the way I built up my last models, it was four layers. So it was when I was getting to that last, the last dry brush, which was a very targeted, meant to be a very fine dry brush, just to pick out that extra little bit of detail. I'd be like that. Oh, please don't mess this up now. Now I'm getting, it's going to take me back. I'm going to have to. That's when I kind of get nervous. <laughs> Jeff Lacey, always dry brushing. I can imagine. How many tents are you making this evening, Jeff? Is it a village? <laughs> Is it a full army camp? Of, of tents that is on the go for today. Um, our viewers have actually been heading over to uh, Purple Line um, oh, to go start that um, that that road into bespoke scenery. So um, wow. yeah, driving driving a little bit of sales for the community. That's what this is all about. This part of the show is normally um, assigned to uh, Community Spotlight for showing off people's hard work from photos that you want to send in or talking about um, uh, different businesses or services that might be out there. Perhaps you do one and you want to kind of get people to know about it. That's fine. Let us know. If you've got photos you want to show of your stuff, send them in. Have a chat. Um, I didn't pick any up this week because we had quite a chat about um, Blight Forge last week. Go back and have a look at last episode if you haven't seen that yet. Because yeah, it's it, worth yeah. doing well, Blight yeah, Forge do some cracking uh, models, beautiful um, lighting techniques on them, um, and yeah, it's, it's a commission service, so you can just kind of go in there and, and ask for what you want. Yeah, absolutely stellar stuff. Um, but yeah, if, if you've got stuff that you want to kind of show off, or you want to talk about, or you want us to talk about your stuff, it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to be a guest on the show, give us a shout. We've actually had a couple of people talk about becoming a guest on this show, um, and we are in conversations uh, currently. Uh, with regards to that so watch this space because we could have a third person on the show what is possibly uh going to get in our way for that one is the fact that we all know that my computer struggles with having lots of processes going on at the same time so we use skype as that uh, as that medium to call um and if that's going to be a problem then we'll try other platforms other programs and if it's all going to be a bit too much then we might have to drop the whole guest thing until i get a dedicated pc which for the foreseeable future just isn't happening at the moment um but we'll give it a try so if you want to be a guest on the show we want you on this show um kyle has actually said that he would give up his spot for a week if you want to come and be on the show and just kind of have a chat with me or whatever that's absolutely fine maybe we can do it like you know for part one or part two we're open to all sorts of options and suggestions. It's your show as much as it is ours. Um, so do get in contact if you fancy coming on. Nothing, there's nothing like expected of you. There's no script. We're completely unscripted. <laughs> Makes me um, laugh every, every time we say it. Honestly, yeah. there's no script, guys. You might think it with how seamless uh, our dialogue sometimes Effortless. is. But it's just, it's just all glad. Like the editing on this show is fantastic. <laughs> It's, it's how fun. they record it and make it look like it's a live performance is beyond me oh, brilliant it's, it's next level. it really next is level. um but yeah you can come on and just be a part of the chit chat if you want to get in touch um obviously danny was just saying that you know an option would be me giving up a spot it's not something i'd like to do we were talking about this before the show so obviously i want to be able to have a chat with you guys that are coming on as well but if it means getting somebody on the show and, and getting to be a part of it then if that's the option we have uh, we'll yeah, cross that bridge. It it won't be, it won't be a regular thing. Car giving up a spot for guests because it's it's kind of his show too. So um, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, is, we're open to suggestions. We're open to options. Yeah. Once in a while, perhaps. It would be lovely to get some of our regular views on um, as well. Come on and, and have that chat live. Be lovely. See, look, Adrian's putting in there, unscripted, he could never tell. I'm going to ignore the laughing emojis and just take the words there. No, well, I'm, I'm not I looking, so I can't Adrian. see him, Kyle. Yeah, I know, Adrian, it's shocking that this is actually, this is all info. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? I know, what a shocker, what a shocker. <laughs> Do you know be what? Be careful, because really... the BBC will be after you in a minute, mate, they really will. <laughs> I am really happy with how that's actually come up. Okay, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I give you a screen to yourself here, maybe you can hold it up to... Uh... I, I, don't, I don't think you're going to see too much at this point because it's the very first layer. 
Um, oh, okay. But yeah, it, I, I don't think my camera being as bad as it is will really pick much up. But I was really nervous about my death company because I didn't want them just to be black and then have the detail picked out. I just yeah. wanted to add that bit of noise, bit of depth to them. And I think as well, Adrian had actually said as well, using that grey just to pick out edges and, and things like that. Yeah. To make it look it. Oh, I did get a, a full screen. Yeah, you 20 did. seconds behind. It's probably too late, but I'm holding them up just in case. Oh, Thanks you're talking now. I thought I'd leave it on. Oh, nice. <laughs> just, I'm just huddling over my brew. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I've got I've got ten Death Company to paint, but I've got five sprayed at the moment. So yeah. hopefully I can I have a bit of a learning curve um, with them. And I the learned so much from doing those zone tropes. Mm. Like, yeah, it was a really good um, a really good learning experience. Nice, because I have said as well I would like to pick up a little bit of sort of maybe some edge highlighting, um, some ink work on sort of weapons and things like this, because the weapons on these kits and the the jump pack's got so much detail in, it'd be really nice to pick some of that out. Shame to make them all black, right? Pardon? Shame to make them all black. Yeah, exactly, and they've got the detail on there to be different colours and just to be that little bit standout like they should, because they are such a key and iconic unit for the Blood Angels. You know, you, you do want to do them. And I am really looking forward to seeing them in the Crusade battle. Because obviously the Blood Angels in Crusade have a whole rule system around this floor in their gene seed. Um, it's a bit like the old school, a little bit like the old school rules where any model could end up being death pumping at the start of the battle. So you used, you used oh, to have right, to see. You used to have to So roll. they can turn, they, oh yeah, no, no, I've, I've, I've seen that actually happen in some old games that I've, I've played yeah. against opponents who play them. Yeah. And you have to roll for them to see if they turn into... Yeah, if they go death on field. Yeah. Uh, with this one, with the Crusade, it's all about how many units they kill in combat. The more units they kill in combat, the more likely they are to succumb to their, uh, their genetic flaw of becoming blood-crazed lunatics. Which makes sense. I like it. Very thematic. Just <laughs> guess what? What we want. <laughs> I'm going to get that T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Easy eight narrative players. <laughs> home, <laughs> home of the narrative player. Unscripted. Unscripted. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was hoping that during the break that I would be able to get the hopper emptied on this airbrush and get it a bit of a clean through, but I'm still going. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit spattery, but it's going to be like one of the under layers, and it's not really going to matter so much. And it's only really spattering in in places where I'm going to make it grimy anyway. So I'm okay. I'm, I'm just carrying on. Um, but yeah, it's just... Cleaning uh. your air blush makes for a really good TV. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to flush it through. I wasn't going to strip it down or anything. <laughs> anyway, I'll take you back over the workbench so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, you can see now that uh, we've had quite a, a change in the colour scheme. Underneath is, is quite shadowed now. Um, I really like these colours. I like yellows. I like browns. I think they're, they're really nice. Excuse me, trying to swallow there. Um, and what I've just been doing, just been going around some details, almost like you would pin washing, running those sort of uh, washes into the details. I've been spraying around them just to kind of lend a bit more, I suppose, gravity to them so that you, your eye is drawn to them more. And as I kind of go over them with, with um, lighter colours, I'll tone that right down. So, yeah, I'll go right up to some bright highlights on it as well. Um, and then some places might look too bright. But then at the end of it, you go over with that first, that original mid-tone in a really, really thin layer all the way over to make a filter. And then it looks really nice. And it kind of brings it all back together again. I'm just kind of going over some areas where it kind of didn't hit. Um, Jeff's just put in the comments, nothing worse than spending weeks painting minis just to have them killed in the first turn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we've all experienced it. We can just get excited at a new unit because I was so bad at painting. I've never really had painted miniatures. I did it with my Vindicator. We spoke about it before. Got wiped on turn one from or, opening turn that wasn't opening yours. Opening turn, yeah. But that was is, me being a bit of a bully, really. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's the game. It's a war game. <laughs> it's not made for being nice, is it? No. <laughs> We're empty. Exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get off my tank. Right there we go. Let's um. Give that needle a bit of a wipe down. Ooh. 
was just saying to Danny in the break, uh, there we, go. we were on the air, I had uh, a nice homemade fairy cake and... <laughs> it did look really nice. Three were made, two with like surprises in the middle of chocolates and sweets and things, and I picked the one that didn't have it. I was um... really upset. I mean, it's hard to be upset while still eating cake, but comparatively, I mean, it's not the um, not the best surprise in the middle. Like I, I want more like lictors. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get you as well. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm just gonna eat this cake. Ha! <laughs> surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't got any surprise. Yeah, bite into this tank, and there's a golden ticket with which you can use to exchange for a 135th Panther model. Uh... <laughs> for one lictor. Oh no! <laughs> surprise, <laughs> we got you in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So I'm actually going to put a bit of neat cleaner through here because it's a bit of a clog in there. I'm not going to fill the whole hopper up. That would just be a bit of a waste. But yeah, a bit, a, bit a, bit a bit halfway, perhaps. Always dry brushing. Get in there. You can see that concentrations on as well now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you can tell that difference. <laughs> I've just put that needle protector back on the end there because I'm obviously when I'm cleaning it, I'm purging out into this pot, and you don't want to accidentally kind of knock against Flat here. Yeah, so put that back on there. I will give the the hopper a bit of a wipe out as well. I've got my little tissue. It's had some uh, cleaner in there, so it should all be nice and soft and easy to move the easiest way of, of cleaning out your hopper i find is to take it off it just unscrews because if the paint on the inside is dried i move my light in a bit closer again paint on the inside here is dried uh, even a little bit and that's quite a lot of paint in there really for the size of the nozzle that you've got and um, if you were to knock any of this even semi-dried stuff off and it goes into it it's just going to cause more, further blockages so just by putting a bit of water in there and i put cleaner through it as well now uh, should have hopefully attacked it just get the edge of a tissue and just get your finger in there and then just wipe it until it all comes out and there you are like, like a bit of a sludge on there that is my way that is i've not learned that from anybody else that's my little thing so yeah there's me contributing to the adventure probably every airbrush user does this <laughs> but it's the little thing that i learned so i'm i'm happy with it cool you'll never guess what i just found i mean these models i've had for a very long time i put these together a very very long time ago maybe when i wasn't as diligent as a modeler and i just used to try and get things onto the table as quick as i could yeah <laughs> i've just found a mold line oh again oh but oh well again an easily fixable one but still something you've got to go back to and that that can be demoralizing that can you know be counter to the whole motivation thing that we talk about yeah. can it because that's 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 a stimmy in your flow of progress yeah but it's okay it's okay it's all also teaching me you know it's reinforcing the factor take your time yeah get your modeling done properly of course Otherwise, you'll hit these little road bumps and snags i'll get there I've just put a tiny bit more cleaner in again at the, in the actual chamber and I've used my brush just to kind of lift anything out of there. I know that um, I could be adding to blockages if there's any kind of dry paint like I was saying with a hopper but it's really hard to get in there um, with your finger and a bit of tissue so on that one I just kind of grin and bear it and hope that I get everything. But the, the bristles can go in. I try to lift it all out as much as I can. There we go, a couple of dried bits and it seems to be flowing and you can put like a, a drop of water in he says a drop of water emptied that bottle didn't I let's go <laughs> for my other bottle drop of water in and just see how it flows water obviously is much thinner than the paint but you get an idea oh just while you're doing that Danny I had it was Luke actually um, sent me shared with me a another game we always saw was that the football game it is the football yeah, game. Yeah, shared it with me earlier on. I didn't have enough oh. time to bring it up as a part of the show, but I'll let you talk about it. Yeah, I'll just watch your sort of, uh, sort yeah. of cleaning. Um, I had a chance just to go on and have a quick look at it, and the models for it look fantastic. Um, they look like really, really nice sculpts. So the idea behind it, it looks I think like... they're prints. Are they just prints? Are I they... think they, I think they are. the files and then print yourself you. Either or, I think. I didn't look into yeah. it too much. I didn't have an awful lot of time before the show went yeah. live. Um, and it, yeah, it just looks like the soccer football with your foot version of Blood Bowl. But yeah, 
fan, not fancy, in the sport, fancy yeah, football, yeah, fantasy but fantasy style football with weapons and, and all sorts. Um, but no, it looked it looked really interesting, and the sculpt or the prints looked really really cool. As they well. did look absolutely magnificent. Um, the game is retired. Um, yeah, but they are, it. but they are still supplying um, their stock for people who still play the game. But then just not doing anything more with the game, from what I can tell. Yeah, yeah that's what I, yeah, that's what I saw as well. So they're, they're, yeah, they've retired it, but you can still get hold of it, which is cool. This is really nice. It's, it is. It shows you that they're in it for the right reason again. Community yeah. idea, um, and you get a, you get a lot of that. I feel in this kind of hobby, this is really nice. Always nice. Um. I'd like to do something with some Gasland stuff uh, on the show at some point. And um, Kesslin, who we've already said isn't live today, unfortunately, um, sent me some information about another game that you can buy the rule book through Osprey, who's the same way that you would get hold of the book for Gaslands. Um, and it's called Billion Suns, and it's basically like Gaslands, but in space with spaceships. Um, and the rule book is now available for about eight pounds through Osprey. Um, I've got a digital PDF version of the rules for Gaslands. I didn't see the option for Billion Suns uh, on there. You can buy it paperback. Um, Perhaps there is a digital one on there, I just didn't see it. But yeah, haven't really looked into it too much at the moment. Looks like it could yeah. be really good fun. I love a spaceship game. Always wanted to have a decent spaceship game. Um, but they don't make models for it. You make them yourself. So just like Gaslands. So okay. yeah. I mean, I still haven't actually had... I've watched some Gaslands. Yes. I, I, I remember I would come around after a long week at work and just want to geek out and be around people hobbying. And uh, just sit there on a sofa and read a rule book or <laughs> yeah the game's just kind of going on around you yeah and everything's going on and it was lovely um, and it always looked like just a fun game no one seemed to really care about winning Gaslands everyone just wanted the carnage and just see what happens. there's always there's always the player who just wants to ram everyone off the start yeah. line <laughs> yeah exactly that never um, ever make it to the finish line ever not yeah. even close <laughs> I would yeah I would love a go I'd love a go modelling so if it's something we're going to do I will, um, even if you just tell me what kind of vehicle I need to get as my Basically, um, the, the game is, is designed with matchbox cars in mind, or Hot Wheels cars, or anything like yeah. that. Um, that there is a sort of a scale to it, and it is about 164th scale, roughly, I think right. it's 164th. It uh, doesn't matter, just go and buy a Hot Wheels car. No one yeah. cares. And there, there are rules to it. You can play it super simple. You can just play it with a car if you want, and just kind of yeah. have fun skidding around, doing jumps and ramps, and, you know, it's, it's very, very maneuver based like x-wing but more focused on the maneuvers gotcha hmm. and That's you can play with more than one vehicle if you want to but it will take a lot longer yeah even the addition of if it's just you and the mate playing with one car um it's not necessarily going to um, take you double the time to play with double the cars it might take you a lot more because there's tactics from so many different sides that you've yeah. got to think about um so the game really does pick up quite a lot of time stamp on it um and it's just basically you, you, you roll for activations. You go, oh, this car's going to be activated next, and this car's going to be activated next, so on and so forth. And then, yeah. So player by player, goes through all their cars. And, um, yeah, it's fun. It's really, really good. Uh, it's a good way of making or losing friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to play a quick, simple game, especially if I just want to have some friends over. I just say, bring a little car that you've done up or whatever, and we'll just take one machine gun each um, choose your direction it's going to be facing in or or whatever because you can have different directions and then you just kind of go for it and set up a track see what happens yeah did you just talking about, just change the subject quickly um, of a spaceship game did you ever play Battle Peak Gothic I never played it as a tabletop game but I have played the PC version and I, I really liked yeah. it yeah it's cool it's, it's a nice adaptation on the PC I played a bit as when I was younger of the tabletop game back when you used to have to I really enjoyed it in all the Warhammer games when you just have to guess for range. There's, there's, there was, was it a Nova Cannon, which was like a big, huge, capital ship-killing weapon. You just have to guess the range. That's maybe what I remember. Oh, yeah, God. I liked, um, on the PC version, I played Orcs because... Orcs. Mm. Because yeah, ramping. ramping. Yeah. <laughs> Push the big button that says, here we go. Brilliant, that's all yeah. I need to know. Make sure it's painted red. We don't, we don't know about stopping. You stop when you hit something, don't you? Yeah, right. <laughs> Generally, <laughs> slow down or just change direction. <laughs> cool, right, so I've got through... That, that's my empty bottle. I don't want that one. I'll flush a little bit of water through here. So I just put a bit more of that shadow colour in just to finish off sort of really what I was doing. Um, and that's, that's that colour done there for now. I can always 
Come back to it. Boop. Brilliant. Let me just check what I got written down for things that I've wanted to talk about today. So, yes, this this particular tank that I'm doing here is a Tamiya kit. I don't have an awful lot of experience with um, kits that aren't war games. When I was a kid, what I first started doing was airfix kits. My first kit I ever did was a, a Super Saber um, aircraft. So from the, one of the very first jets, really, sort of from the sort of uh, late 40s, early 50s, I think it was. Uh, Super Saber, or just a Saber. I, I loved it. It was brilliant. And then I did... Um, uh, a Sherman, which I painted in whatever colours I wanted at the time, because I had no idea what I was doing, but I loved making it. And it was brilliant. It was a 172nd scale tank and a 148th scale aircraft, I think, and they're both airfix. But I never really had, um, had a few models, uh, uh, Flying Fortress and things, which my uncle helped me paint. I loved it. Um, yeah, and, and I never really knew much about the modelling world. I just enjoyed putting models together, right? Uh, yeah, but now, kind of, yeah, and then oh, obviously getting into war games and things and playing Warhammer Forty Thousand, which was really my, you know, my um, gateway uh, <laughs> sort of addiction. Um, I've kind of put the the modelling side of it away and played the war game modelling of it for 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 a very long time, and then kind of got back into it not too long ago, to be honest. And I just wanted to do something different. And one day I decided I like tanks, and I don't really know where that came from. I just suddenly really liked them. I, know, I didn't really know much about them, and I started studying them a lot. I learned a lot over the last twelve to eighteen months, um, and I found a new a new love for uh, modern history. So like the recent history, like the last hundred years. Um, modern. Yeah is, yeah, is it is that what we will call modern history? Yeah, so yeah. contemporary is sort of 20 years up, and then okay. after that is modern. Okay. Yeah, so I've got a lot of fascination with the Second World War, um, because we all, I think, really know someone who was in it in some capacity, whether they were young and refugee, or whether they were a little bit older and were actually you know, a, a soldier or a combatant in some form. Um, and I was very close with my grandfather, who served in the Royal Marines. Um, so whenever I was making airfix kits, my granddad would always come home, and he worked in the Royal Marines on the ships, and he would always be like, I shot one of those down, I shot seven of those down. I'm like, oh, thanks, granddad, <laughs> cheers. Um, yeah, brilliant, thanks. I'll just throw this on the window, shall I? <laughs> um, and then over the years, I, I, I grew closer to him, and I got a few stories, and he passed away some years ago, and I never really knew the full story of it, and I've, I've discovered really that um, what I learn from here drives my... my, my I, I want to know more about what happened to him and the other people that were there. It is unfortunately at a stage in, in our lives where it's just stories now, and you can never really fully appreciate the horror that that must have been. Um, and I think that doing these models and, and understanding them is, is for me, is, is a really nice way to kind of um, understand it a little bit more. I think it's important for people to know about it. I love tanks. I think they're wonderful things, but they weren't nice. There was nothing about them that was made to be nice to other people. And generally, the people inside them as well. Have you seen the inside of a Churchill? Oh, man, it is cramped. Like you aren't getting out of that if it's on it's, fire. It's horrible. Also, it's not. It's not better in modern day. Like I, all no. respect the people that joined the tank regiment because, oh, you're just trapped in a tin can with other people. Um, Absolutely. And I always used to get, you know, was told horror stories about the training the guys went through, and like you do your MBC drills, you don't leave that tank for days. You just you can't leave. You're in you there. Seal, you seal it up, and that's it. You're in yeah, there. Oh. Um, and they don't really come with much amenities. There's no toilet to speak of in there. If you do need to go, you have to hold on to it, or if you can, uh, you go into an empty shell casing or something like that. But if you are like us and you are British and you serve the uh, the British tankies, then you do get a water heater. And a lot of the Americans and allies generally have been like, "What's that for? It's for brewing up, mate." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rome amazing. wasn't made without its cups of tea. What? <laughs> One of those things people think it's a joke like no 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 <laughs> they have a kettle in the tank so that if you get stuck in there 
and you can have a cup of tea. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so yeah, like this is the first time I've done a model in this scale. I love it. They do go larger. You can go right to like one eighth or one sixth in terms of what models are really. But at that point, it really is just something to kind of whiz around in the field because it's a fully motorized thing that you can sit in. But um, one thirty second uh, is really really rare now. You don't really see that very much anymore. Uh, one thirty fifth is really quite popular. It is pretty much the premier model to be making things in. It doesn't scale up with aircraft very well. You won't really find um, 135th aircraft. You'll find them in 148th, for example. But that's not to say that you won't find them. They're just, if they are out there, really hard to find. Um, this is very close to uh, 54 millimeters. So if you're making dioramas or, or even trying to play a war game at this scale, that would be kind of fun because it would just be that little bit bigger. Um, then it's one. 150 sorry 54 millimeter for 135th it's actually not the accurate scale that's actually closer to um 132nd but like i say they're, they're a bit harder to find um but most of the times it, between especially between the manufacturers it's actually quite hard to tell um just if you're going to do dioramas and stuff consider having um their equipment uh by the same manufacturer perhaps I've just poured this paint in and it went in really, really fast. And I've got about a third of a hopper of this dark base. So I suppose I better use that wisely because, yeah, yeah, might end up might end up wasting that a little bit. I'm going to actually see if I can pour a little bit of that back in there. Um, uh, you were just checking your list there, Danny. Was there anything else uh, that you sort of had down for this evening? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I've actually got a list here, um, which I'll open in just a minute, of all the different modelling manufacturers because I, it's not just Airfix. It's not just Tamiya. Those are the premier ones that you're going to find. Um, I like this word, premier. Um, I, again, I don't have an awful lot of experience about it, but I thought that I'd just kind of open up that point of discussion so that people can learn because I'm hoping I've actually got a split in this bottle. That's why oh. it was coming out all weird. There's a split down the side of the nozzle. Look at yeah. that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. action. Yeah, I know, right? I don't think I'm going to get that paint back in there. Or oh, I am. <laughs> I am. It's opening. There it is. It's open. Um, yeah, because people have actually got a lot out of talking about all the different scales and models and you know, the different tanks and things like that, we've inspired people, as we know, Adrian, to want to have a go. Uh, so I thought I would kind of open up the discussion to talk about the different manufacturers that there are out there. So I did a little bit of research. I was quite surprised by the amount that's out there. Because again, unless you really know, you're only really exposed to things like, you know, Tamiya or Humbrol is another one. Revel is an is another one. Revel is um is a very easy one to find. They're very uh, very good for beginners, very good for starters. If it's if it's your first one. Let me just pop that back on there. Okay, cool. And I'll pop up my list of all these different ones. And I didn't um, put these out on the, on the description, but again, if people are interested, I, I will more than happily do that. Uh, where is my list? Here it is. So um, this is a list that I picked up from a forum with a lot of pro modelers and experienced modelers um and i've got a little bit about them just a little tiny bit so tammy it's a good range and you can find them virtually everywhere uh they do uh, especially the stuff that i've been looking at now the quality is just superb as far as i'm concerned um revel is a little lower quality but really cost effective so if you're looking for something to kind of get started in um like a couple of our viewers are, then Revel's a really good choice. Um, Humbrol, smaller range, lower quality, but good let lower entry. Um, I've seen a lot of Humbrol models and they seem to be, um, you can get a lot of them with uh, starter sets of paints and things like that. So you kind of get like a Humbrol kit, um, but perhaps there's more out there as well. Um, AB Miniatures, not one that I've ever heard of, but apparently everyone's screaming out that they're really good sculpts. So that's AB Miniatures. RAFM Miniatures make really good vehicles. Uh, and Liberation Models make really good moderns. I couldn't find any more on elaboration on that, um, but I'm assuming modern style vehicles. So probably everything from sort of Korean War or perhaps a little bit later even. Um, uh, Merliton, so that's M-I-R-L-I-T-O-N. Merliton Miniatures make good, um, very specific here, make good World War II Italian vehicles. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps they make more and their Italian stuff is exceptionally good. Uh, but yeah, so Merliton Models make good Italian World War II. CP Models have a really nice range. I found that uh, quite a bit where I went. And Britannia, are a bit poor, hands like baseball mitts on their actual um, figures for their diorama sets. Um, and generally people tend to stay away from them. And I couldn't find much more about Britannia. So that's just a few of the model manufacturers that I found out there. Perhaps if you're interested, go and have a little look and do a bit of research, find out what you're interested in. 
and it's a couple of nice comments just gone in as well just just after that um Adrian just saying, uh, guess range weapons are fun until you go up against a tool maker. I'm guessing there's a story behind that. Um, but yeah, someone that can <laughs> guess, guess ranges within a quarter of inch aren't particularly fun. Um, especially when those weapons tend to be quite devastating because the idea is you don't get to hit with them all the time. Um, but someone that is that good <laughs> would not be fun to play against. Um, and then, yeah, another good point as well is um, there are some really nice things out there that point out and do well cinematically or have those good sort of interviews where you get that the horror of war from World War Two. Yeah. Um, Adrian mentions Band of Brothers. That was a great one. It the really other, was. The other one, The Pacific, from the same. Yeah. Same sort of set. I found that I found that more useful personally than Band of Brothers. Actually. Really. I, I think that's because I knew less about the, the sort of Pacific campaign. I certainly um, know less about it, yes. Yeah, but, yeah I found that really interesting. Obviously, I'm lucky from my background, from what I did. I've had some great sort of guest lectures come in um, and talk about their first-hand experiences. I remember once that we had um, we had a member of the Viet Cong come in. Oh, wow. Talk about it. But he was one of the people that didn't realise the war was over and sort of lived in the tunnels for about 10 years. Oh, afterwards. wow, really? Yeah. Um, and he talks about his experiences and things like that and it's it's well, yeah when you get to hear them firsthand and you hear those kinds of things reading it in a book and things like that just don't quite do it justice they don't do you they get to listen to somebody and they can emote actually what it was like and we sit here and you know we can talk about it and you know we, it's a fantastic hobby but yeah when you you get that real connection it, it's quite eye-opening yeah poignant mm. oh great word Point. Yeah. But, it's, uh, it's cool looking at your the, the changes because I've kind of had my head down a bit. Uh, with yeah. So I've now moved on to the next colour up. I, I like to, when I'm painting my colours, I like to um, put them back in the box but upside down. So um, I know which ones I've done you know, and I keep the one out that I'm using. So yeah, so I don't kind of get lost in there. Makes and I'm sense, just, I don't really know what I'm doing until I kind of start getting the paint on there and I, I see what it's doing, you know? Um, I'm trying to darken up a lot of the uh, the initial base colour that's on there. But it's also softening off the edges um, of the shadow colour that I've put on as well. Um, just basically playing with it until I go, that looks cool. Yeah, I like that. Because I'm not a pro. I think it's a skill in itself of knowing when to what, stop. The what, yeah, 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 when yeah. When to walk away, when to go, that's enough, I'm happy. Um, it's something I've seen on other tutorials and mentioned in forums and things, but it's not, I don't think it's an easy skill. I think it comes with experience of going, no, nope, that's it. If I do any more now, it's going to go, it's, it'll be too much. Yeah, I did this last time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I ruined it. Yeah. yeah. Stop. No, I need to stop. And it's quite nice. The, the, I suppose the upside for me, uh, only getting sort of two hours a week, is I'll do something. And then I get a good time to, although I don't get to model, I get to stare at it. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that comes down to, we spoke about that episodes ago. It's about planning mm. your model, actually having an idea about what you want it, what you want to do, what what you want it to yeah. look like, how you think you're going to get there. Having that plan, that end image in your head is really important. It's vital, you know? Yeah, and there's just that chance to go, oh, I can't do any more tonight. I've run out of time. But if I've carried on, I might have actually done too much, but I've stopped. I've had the chance to look at it tomorrow and I've gone, ah, oh, I'm really happy actually with with what I've done there. I, I'm not going to do any more to that now. Actually, yeah. that's, that's what I was after. And that I found that actually quite helpful. Not, you know, there was no conscious thought behind that. It's just quite a happy little, happy little coincidence. Or what we say. Um, happy little coincidence. But it's helped me and it's taught me something. It's taught me to put the model down, step back from it like look at it again with fresh eyes i think someone said that in the comments fresh eyes might have been jeff actually yeah fresh eyes in the morning have a look at it come down and notice that that cottage yeah. mill that you've made was blue <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh I, we're I, laughing now but the stress yeah. that that caused i imagine the air turned pretty blue as well <laughs> yeah it was a furious day of work in there but i was a kid and didn't care so <laughs> Haha, <laughs> Dad's got to do this, so I'm going to go and play on my bike now. Bye. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's really bad. Bye. Yeah, ah, oh, sucks for you. <laughs> yeah. 
different when it's your job, I suppose. Anyway, so here I am making this model. What am I going to do with it once I've done with it? I'm probably just going to put it on display. Yeah. Um, but are there games that play with 135th? Can you say you... games you've got up? Some, some games do. Gaslands um, is designed to be played um, at with, with Hot Wheels cars. Excuse me, but um, it actually has uh, a conversion, a percentage conversion for photocopying all the templates for maneuvers um, for different scales. And you can go right up to 28. I think it even does have it in there for like this sort of scale. So if you want to get like the 28 millimeter cars or even bigger and play around with like highly detailed cars, brilliant. You can do it if you want to, or you can go right down to micro machines, um, which is probably just manic because that's just about fitting more on the table. <laughs> Um, I was just thinking, it's just reminded me of something. It might be something we kind of get into next week. But with Jeff, obviously, this is a job. You know, we, we there is a difference there. There is. Sort of job and hobby. And I've definitely experienced it before where I've had a job that revolved around my hobby and your attitude does change to it. Uh, yes. I was just wondering if, if Jeff's felt that. Have you, has there been a difference? Are there, do, do you get as much enjoyment from what, what is our hobby now? Or <laughs> so it's being it quite only... careful because this is his livelihood on yeah. uh, live on, on live television right now or like live show. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I love it, mate. Love it. Off show. Yeah, no, like, no, 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 I hate it. It's awful. No, I don't want to see another model tent again in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's one of the things I wanted to talk about as well is like models for making, models for painting. Where do you draw that line? What is it? Can you do anything with it? Are you going to make a diorama out of it? What are you going to draw? Do yeah, uh, yeah. Do you <laughs> I used to do that when I was a kid? You know, um, when it when it was just me and my old man growing up, I used to have some toy tanks, um, and my dad would make uh, little cardboard uh, boxes, paint them grey for buildings, and you drive them around a determined amount of distance or whatever. Maybe with a ruler and go, you can go here, go here. And I have a cotton wool ball like this, and chuck it up in the air, and if it touched an enemy tank, you hit it. Because I was I was a kid. I was like a little kid, not like, yeah, <laughs> not 16. like sixteen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By then we'd move on to ping pong balls. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to get really um, malicious about it, then you can, um, you know, you get to shoot your opponent's model with a BB gun or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember doing things like that, lining up like action men. Yeah. Who who didn't? Yeah. Come on. BB guns and things. <laughs> who didn't? So I might go back in later on and actually go back quite heavier on the shadow colours, uh, especially on the rear of this hull on the top. Uh, I really like how it's kind of gone on the bottom here. Um, and I might I might kind of bring in a bit more shadow in some of these lighter patches. But I do want to make it a bit darker at the back. I'm hitting it with this kind of lighter colour here. Um, and though it's, it's nice, I want it to be a bit, a bit grimier just towards the engine bay because um, tanks got really grotty in that area because it chucks up all the soot and all the grease and all the engine stuff, you know, grimy yeah. bits. Yeah. You know what I found I'm oddly satisfied about sort of getting more into this hobby and watching a lot more videos is watching people that paint, that sort of build up layers in their painting. And you'll look and you'll go, I don't really get how this is going to work. And then you just watch layer after layer go on and then suddenly one layer will go on. and It's, it's like a key together. change and you just go, like, whoa, yeah, and you're like, yeah. whoa. And again, it goes back to that knowledge um, of, of how your paints, work, how your colours work, how you can build those things. You were talking about the pink being a, a great undercoat yeah, to yellow. Yeah, that's that is could, that is yeah exactly that. I'm watching it going like, what are you doing? Going, what are you? Oh, hang on. Whoa! <laughs> and and having that moment. I think the guy found that out by accident as well. What a, what oh. a brilliant accident! <laughs> Sorry, Jeff just put in. Um, I say by the time he's finished a build, he's sick of looking at it. Yeah, I bet. But, I bet. But it's nice to see it later in photo. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Time, one of the things like, he's always said done. is, um, like, it's nice to see it go to a customer mm. and then get photos of it as well. And again, I suppose it comes with what we were just talking about. You get that break from it. You get that break, but you get to see it again and go, yeah, it looks really good. I'm really happy with that. But yeah, I suppose when you've done every little part of it from the build to the paint. You've seen it go through those weird stages of just being all grey, and then. I suppose it's like a kid, you love it when you're there to start with, and after a while, you just wanted to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm 
really happy with that. I'm really happy with that. I've, I've, I've kind of softened off those um, the shadow tones. I don't really know what I'm expecting it to do. I don't know if I want it to go like intensely darker. I, I think what I might might do is is push out the areas where that shadow is, and then kind of um, soften it down and decrease it um, with later stages, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm just talking rubbish now, um, but you know, you kind of. Never. Yeah. Never, <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Cheers. It's all getting a bit aggressive again now, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> but for example, like where I'm mean, pointing with my brush here, um, but the, the, sort of the edge of this shadow color kind of ends here. But maybe I'll kind of bring it out like twice as as far, and then just soften and feather those edges back in with lighter colors as I go to bring up that base color again. I don't know. I'm just I'm just enjoying playing with it and, and developing it. And then, of course, what I've got to do. Is I've got to match that because that now looks completely different. That is, you can see how, because I've done that filter effect just by spraying just really like a, like a mist over the whole color, how it's affected that base color. If you can see that, Kyle, just a second, Bob, remember you got your delay. What a difference that has made to it. Because I haven't hit the whole of that tank with the brown like in, in intensity, just a thin veneer. Is that the right word? Veneer. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow, look, yeah, especially when you've got the turret on, you can really see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, like I say, I'm not going to do the turret yet, because I, I'm just going to hit that with a bit of sandpaper, a uh, real fine sandpaper, and then, of course, paint the underside of it as well, just to <laughs> kind of get that down. But the detail on this Tamiya kit even has, like, weld lines and stuff in here, and the, the, the way that the um, the different uh, pieces of armor, slab armor, were um, kind of constructed is it, absolutely fantastic. There are methods, modeling methods, putty methods, if you like, um, to kind of get the rolled steel effect on here. They've actually got it printed or, or molded, sorry, cast onto the actual um, uh, cupola up here or cupola, I've heard it being called as well, um, which was had a heavier uh, pattern on it. But if you go and look at a real tank, especially the Second World War stuff, they're made from rolled steel and they have a, a, a very um, unique texture to them and there's ways of achieving that with modeling putty um and i was going to do it to this one but actually because i would never made this build before i just kind of wanted to get stuck in so i made a very deliberate decision to not do anything further to it and just to kind of get on and, and, and make it so yeah um if you are making a 135th model i'd like to know how you're painting it are you just going to go with block colors because that's how they were painted they went one color I'm just going to paint it this green or I'm going to paint it this color with a camo stripe over it or are you going to delve into the world of modulations or are you going to you going to do weathering or do you just want to go here's a piece I, I finished that and put it on your shelf and go proud of that I'm really interested to know all the different ways of doing things and you know how people want to kind of make their models look um yeah got a nice kind of graded sort of look here at the, on the back where it starts off really grimy it actually looks really dark on my camera there um, if I bring it down a bit, my lights do kind of make it look a bit weirder. But again, I'm just going to soften up these edges here and it just hopefully should add a bit of gradient to it. And then I'm going to skip a color uh, because this is Dunkel Gelb base or dark, dark yellow base, which is what I started with. And then I'll move straight over to light base and I'll start really enhancing some colors. And I'm going to do basically the opposite of what I've done rather than picking out areas where there are recesses or lines and details. I'm going to go for those raised edges. So, for example, not necessarily focusing on these lines and hatches and these little engine ports or whatever. So I'm going to start going for these these raised uh, efforts little here. I think there's like little air filters and things where they kind of just sucks the fumes of the engine out and gets it out from the crew compartments, or whatever. And then you've got a little periscope at the front here just little bits and pieces like that even the um, the bow gun which has kind of got this this ball this dome on the front here i just kind of hit those with gentle highlights and again it just brings your eye to them um not a realistic sort of shading or rendering um but just gives it something um so yeah that's where i'm going to be going with that um how have you got on with all of your stuff there kyle today yeah really good i've got the gray layer uh, on them all, they are really, really smart. I'm going to see how it settles, look at it tomorrow, make the decision if I want to hit them with the white, uh, that, that final white. Oh, I'm not sure I'm nervous. Um, I'll, I'll probably <laughs> do one as a test uh, and see if I like it or not. Do you not, do you, do you know, I suppose you don't have a spare model to kind of give that, that test oh, I to? Suppose I, I suppose I do actually. I've seen it, I've seen it on, I've got Sanguinary Guard actually with that same layering on right now. Um, 
because I'm going to go over in gold and I kind of like the way the greys and the whites go on to help me know where it naturally adds that sort of highlight just by yeah. like having that in place. Um, I, do, I do like it. I do like the white on it, actually. I just worry that because they're meant to be they're meant to be black, if it's too much or not, I'm not sure. I'll have a think. I'll sleep on it. So, yeah, just like you say, just kind of leave it there for a little bit and, and come back to yes. it and, and, and see what you think. It'd be it's nice if you could um, if you I could take it. a photograph of it at the end, yeah. um, at the end of the show, stick up on Facebook so we can all see progress. Because you say your lighting isn't so good there to be holding it up to the camera. It'd be nice to see what you've done. If that's all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will, um, I'll wait for the morning. Okay. To get some natural light. So there you go, guys. Yes. If you want to see what Carl's been doing, he promises, <laughs> promises that he's going to have that up tomorrow. Yeah. Might even get some pictures of the intercessors up then. It's been a while. I think we yeah, it has. Up. Yeah, a nice yeah. little group shot or something. would be good. That'd yeah. be fine. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I've got a little bit of work left here to do this evening just because I want to use up the paint that's in the hopper here. I don't think I'm too far from it, to be honest. Um, but I, I'm loathe to waste paint, um, especially when I put in as much as I did. <laughs> getting, getting quite low now, though, which is good. Um, yeah. I want to say slow progress, but actually... A lot done there. I think, yeah, I've got quite a bit done. I mean, it, it might look like I've got loads left to do, and, I, and I, I suppose I do, but that's still that's still good progress there. Having fun. I like it. Brilliant. Wow. Let's come away from here, and uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Where well, I hope we? everyone else has had a, a good, successful evening. Those of you that were all working on projects and hobbies today, I know we've had some diorama work. We've had some Thousand Suns been going on. We've had some curry eating and vodka drinking and some, maybe some tent making uh, in and around that. <laughs> vodka drinking and tent making. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. a great recipe. <laughs> they, go, they go hand in hand. They do. Yeah. They go in hand. So next and week. Then... Oh, go on. Sorry. I, was, I thought you finished. Go on. No, I was going to say, and anyone else that's watching this after it's live as well, just good luck with all your projects. Hope they've gone well. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, next week is our 20th episode. <laughs> Big. which is, is is a big deal um and then it's 26 episodes for our six months in some ways feels like it was yesterday that we started but in other ways it feels like we've been at this for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've, not, I've not got an awful lot to show for it really that'd make us, that'd make us pros, terrible yeah, yeah. A while off that. <laughs> it's really hard making scripts for that many shows you know it's been difficult it's been <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah maybe next week um i'll do something a bit different um for the show perhaps we'll have a guest online and we'll see how that goes um but yeah that's that's for next week um anything else from you kyle no it's just been lovely it really has been uh, a really good evening so thank you everyone thanks everyone we had a chat in the comments as well yeah it's been really active we had a really good view count as well so thanks very much for coming along uh supporting us um don't forget of course uh to find us on our other platforms on facebook and on instagram and follow us on each of those and like the posts that we put up there and most importantly if you haven't already or if you know someone uh share it out and make sure that they or yourself subscribe to the channel because that really really helps us um so yeah once again subscribe to the channel yeah i love that little little banner that comes up yeah cool. already already had like some progress pictures from this yeah season. excellent just oh, saw that one going in thanks adrian yeah. that's that's really cool yeah keep it active on there um and of course like carl says best of luck with everything that you're painting during the week um and we'll see everyone next week cool until next week stay safe i've been danny i've been kyle and this has been easy eight online painting club Take it easy. See you next week, guys. See you soon. Bye. Cheers now. Bye-bye. Where's that script gone, Kyle? Uh, <laughs> did, I, did, I, did, did you email the script over? I did. Was I, I making the script? I've, I've lost it. <laughs> I'm totally like, it's, it's gone. <laughs>